experience screening these people and come up with some new guidelines for <laughs> I talk with my hands too so this is the same answer he gave before about more let's get the experts together let's have them yes. have a consensus and then I'll let them do whatever they want <laughs> right I'm <gonna> blank check <laughs> Fun this is, yeah I mean it's like everyone expects same their answer presidential again. candidate to know everything and obviously they all have advisors but he is clearly yeah. like eh, well you know we got advisors for these things listen to our politicians so it should be clear the both of you do not agree with Mr. So, Trump. so are we going to ban uh, Muslims from India, from Indonesia, from countries that are our strong allies? That uh, that's not our. <laughs> no, Jeb, you're going to bring everybody <laughs> yes. in. You want everyone to come into this country. Why don't you go live in Indonesia, Jeb? If, if they want to ban Barack Obama, can go back there. Japan <laughs> is. Japan does not allow. That's right. I mean, that's right. Force but that's their country. They can decide what they want to do. Military. We need to arm the Kurds directly. We need to reestablish the relationships with the Sunnis. And we need, that, uh, we need uh, that, war everywhere. And yeah. immigrants. That's when he's talking about arm the Kurds, and you know, that very famous video of the airdrop grenades to ISIS, that was a shipment to the Kurds, supposedly yeah. to yeah. the Kurds. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. Right. The Little Miss Muppet uh, <laughs> airdrop. Yeah. You, can say and you have to dial them back. Last week, the New York Times editorial board quoted you as saying that you would impose up to a 45% tariff on Chinese goods. And that's wrong. They were wrong. It's the New York Times. They're always wrong. Ted's going to use that in terms of the, uh, what to do about oh, yeah. the report about New York. Yeah, they're, they're always wrong. wrong. They don't like to tell us, but they have total control, just about, of North Korea. They can solve <laughs> the problem of North Korea if they wanted to, but they taunt us. They say, well, we don't really have control. Without China, North Korea doesn't even eat. China is ripping us on trade. They're devaluing. Their That's country. true. You know, I saw that on Team America. You know? Thousands and thousands. <laughs> you look at the number of companies and the number in terms of manufacturing and plants that we've lost 50,000 because of China. So now, you never wait, wait a minute. Putting we've a lost, tariff on we've lost anywhere money. between four and seven million jobs because of China. What I said this <laughs> we have very unfair. Oh, I don't know where that's made. I bought them at Burlington Gold Factory. <laughs> billion dollars this year with China. But well, you know, a he's a business because they devalue he's their mad currency. about that. What Getting that deal on those ties. Is that we have great power economic No, he's a businessman. He you know, he's the perfect candidate. He's an entertainer as well as a businessman. If I was talking to somebody, I think we were talking about that at lunch. I saw me these candidates or you know, politicians throughout history, they're lawyers or they're some type of entertainer and they transition into that role and they do quite well because of that experience. Which is why Barack Obama cannot wait until he can be a sports commentator or well, hell, I wish you'd go late be night talk work show for host. ESPN right now. We could just <laughs> coast for the next next few months until the election. I wish I could just let him go play golf or whatever. It's just going to cost us billions of dollars if he takes the rest of the year off on paid vacation. It's not that complicated. I mean, he can I don't say anything about paid vacation. He can retire right now and go do what he wants to do. <laughs> He's not going to do that when we taxpayers pay millions to go play golf. Are you open to slapping a higher tariff on Chinese goods of any sort to go back at them? Okay. Let's go to Darren McBreen uh, in the uh, Twitter booth. Darren. Well, I was going to say Donald Trump might be a good politician now. He, uh, we know he's a good businessman and a good entertainer. But can he dance like Ted Cruz? <laughs> is that, that, I mean, he is seriously busting a move right there. That's pretty good. <laughs> that is good. Very lot Is that the Goldman Sachs Christmas oh, yeah. party? Yeah, the <laughs> Goldman Sachs Christmas party. <laughs> oh, man. That's a rhythm there in that cruise. Now that's entertainment. Anything interesting on uh, on Twitter, McBreen? Hey, I'm I'm resorting to this, so you know what I mean. There's oh. a, I mean, Rand Paul though. I mean, he's he's up there. He's the talk of the town right now. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Rand is he Paul's still trending on Twitter? He's not even at the debate right now, and he's getting all kinds of attention yeah. on Twitter. So that's good news. Very smart yeah. move for him. Yep. Glad it worked out for yeah. him. Yeah. I'm a free trader. One of the things I think is interesting is I'm looking at this. If I'm not mistaken, what Neil Cavuto is doing, uh, along with the New York Times, is saying, you're saying you're going to put a 45% tax on China. And I think Donald Trump is saying, look, they manipulate their currency. The currency manipulation is part of the China price, along with things like... Uh, 
uh, stealing copyrights and, mm -hmm. you know, imitating that. So what he's saying is if they're going to manipulate their currency, he says, and they're, they're just about 45% of their competitive advantage, then we're going to do the same thing in terms of a tax. So then New York Times says a 45% tax. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I agree with what Donald Trump is saying on this. Interesting. There is no equal uh, trade between us and China. And of course, right. that was created uh, by uh, people like Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon, <laughs> essentially. But set up China to uh, take our jobs, to uh, move the economy to a, a communist uh, oligarchy like that so they could control it. ...coming out of North Korea so they don't proliferate all this dangerous material. But what he's touching, talking about, I think, has got merit. And I'm not putting that tariff or whatever he's saying here, but here's what I am saying. I'm liking him for tonight. For too long. <laughs> For too long, what happens is somebody dumps their product in our country and takes our people's Who's jobs. operating that camera? And then we go to a <laughs> yeah, national no. court. And it takes them like a year or two to... It seems like it's on the stage bouncing with him. Guess what? The workers... No, so here, here's the deal, though. You know, they always talk about... Well, they talked about four years ago, eight years ago. They're not talking about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Transatlantic Partnerships. Mm -hmm. Why won't they talk about what is, is coming up? And they ought to ask that to... Uh, to Rand Paul because he's he's been unfairly uh, labeled as somebody who supported that and he did not. He voted against, uh, actually that hasn't come up for a vote yet, mm -hmm. uh, but essentially it was passed when they passed the Trade Promotion Authority to bypass the constitutional requirements for creating a treaty and these things are treaties. We understand they're treaties. The North American uh, trade agreement, NAFTA, uh, was a treaty. And the people who operate that now, they specialize in treaty law. They call it a treaty. So the TPP uh, and uh, the TTIP, those are treaties. And Rand Paul voted against uh, the Trade Promotion Authority, which streamlined that process. I think we need to be very careful. But they do need to talk about, if they're going to talk about trade, how can they not talk about that? And if anybody wants to participate out there at Real Alex Jones, we have a poll. Who do you think is winning tonight's debate so far? Trump, Bush, Cruz, Rubio. No. Or send us your Twitter no questions, too. Yeah. <laughs> no Rand Paul. No, I think he's, he's oh. <laughs> winning in his own way. Which means reversing course. Or send us your questions on Real Alex Jones. It begins with tax rates. Hashtag GOP debate. have the most expensive business tax rate in the world. Let's allow companies to immediately expense. It, it continues with regulatory reform. Regulations in this country are out of control, especially the Employment Prevention Agency, the EPA, and all of the rules. So they won't talk about the root cause of that. And again, Rand Paul did talk about that. He's, he's offered the RAINS Act to essentially rein in the bureaucracies that have no checks on them, on their activity. So the bureaucracies go out and create, on average, about 80,000 pages of new regulations every year. How are you going to contain that? I mean, you can't contain that as long as we allow, as long as Congress has abdicated its duty to pass legislation to these perpetual bureaucracies. I mean, you talk about the Supreme Court having lifetime tenure. Look, these people who, who work in these bureaucracies all have lifetime tenure. There's no way to remove them. They're, they got union protection. So, you know, even when they commit crimes like blowing up gold mines and polluting the river that runs through three states and an Indian reservation, mm -hmm. nobody loses their job. I mean, they have lifetime tenure. They pass the regulations, they pass the taxes, they accuse you of violations, they imp impose excessive fines, they do it without due process, calling it a civil fine. How do you control that? Well, the only, peop the only person who's talked about that is, is Rand Paul in terms of the RAINS Act. You can say, well, we need to have some reform. Baloney. You need to gut this uh, system that has evolved here outside of the Constitution. On, on consumers and people are living paycheck to paycheck, apart from that, there'll be retaliation. Yeah. So the, the soybean uh, sales from Iowa, the entire soybean production, goes the, the equivalent of it goes to China. Or how about Boeing right here within a mile? Do you think that the Chinese, if they had a 45% tariff imposed on all their imports, wouldn't retaliate and start buying Airbus? Of course they would. This would be so devastating. Jeb is giving us, he says, look, you're going to destroy the profits of Archer Daniel Midland. You're going to destroy the profits of Boeing if we have uh, trade tariffs here. <laughs> but see, the thing is, it's not even about that. It's not even about free trade versus some protectionism. What this is fundamentally about, which is what they're not going to talk about, is that the TPP and the TTIP are about changing our sovereignty, about concentrating power, about uh, taking over control of the internet, consolidating everything into a, a global government. Uh, and they do it under the beard of this back and forth debate about free trade versus protected trade.
And it looks like we have a couple questions from Altair underscore 2015 Twitch. Do you think Republicans will actually come up with a plan to defeat ISIS? I think they maybe want to defeat them by funding them. I don't know. I, I don't think so since they created them. I don't. Yeah, their plan is to keep funding the military industrial complex, which in hand continues to fund groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda. Meanwhile, the only person I really consistently hear talk about stop funding ISIS is that we always keep talking about is Rand Paul. Right. So well, of course it sounds like Rand Paul has somewhat of a plan, everybody else not so much. And his other one is, do you think a Republican-led Congress would support a Trump presidency? Both Donald and yeah, my I'm take is no, probably not. Uh, I can't say that. I mean, he's a very popular guy, but I don't think the Republicans feel they can control him the way they'd like to. Mm. I think four years of gridlock would be awesome. Yeah, I do too. Four more years. The question is, you know, look, there's there's a few good, just like Richard was pointing out, you had 168 people on the RNC uh, committee and only four of them had the integrity to call Barack Obama and, and say we're going to impeach him for doing things. Orders of magnitude worse. Uh, than, than what uh, Richard Nixon did in terms of the scope and scale of, of what he did with the IRS abuses alone. He should have been impeached. But only four people out of 168 had the uh, integrity to do that. We have some good people in Congress, but for the most part, uh, the people who are leading and running Congress are no different from the Democrats. And Democrats and Republicans need to understand there is a single party in Washington, and it is controlled by big business. And it really makes me think, David, as you bring up that story about Tricky Dick. You know, people, uh, they have this very infamous view of Richard Nixon, which, you know, is not inaccurate. But you look at the things he he's doing as opposed to our more recent presidents, who have done way worse things oh, yeah. and caught doing it. And it was, it was like, oh, it's, that's just the way politics works. Right. You know, they completely uh, polarize the tricky dick, but they don't want to dare call out Bush or Clinton or yeah. Obama. Well, I think we just have been so inundated with corruption visually in all of our movies and television. And this, we're almost numb to corruption, whereas back then it was, you know, a pretty big deal. And it was also a personality issue. I, I got to tell you, you know, even in the stiff, awkward 1960s, Richard Nixon set new standards for stiff, awkward. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he was about as bad as they, and, and at least you know, Barack Obama doesn't come across that way. So a lot of people who are just yeah, very information voters guy. don't pay much attention to it. They're going to a break. We're going to do a break as well. We'll be right back with more live commentary and analysis of the sixth GOP debate. Welcome back to live InfoWars coverage of the 6th GOP debate. Amazingly enough, they're asking Chris Christie a question about bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Not about blocking them, about building them. They said 11% of the bridges here in South Carolina uh, need to be rebuilt. How are you going to fix this $3.6 trillion worth of infrastructure that we need to do? So here's what he has to say. Of that money, bring the money, the $2 trillion, back to the United States. We'll tax it that one time at 8 and 3 quarter percent. He's going to tax the rich. I told you he was a Democrat. <laughs> We're going to repatriate money back to the United States and tax it and so forth and so on. Yeah, good luck with that. Big corporations don't pay taxes. They go to Washington and get taxes put on their on their competition. Yeah, I'm curious what his definition. And of here's the reality. Moving again and There's the article right there. And it would rebuild those. <laughs> that Pencil's say? largest infrastructure project in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys that's have been really question. good at these articles tonight. Yeah, that's good. Everything he says, just hitting them with truth right away. That's a great, great, great question. That Mostly false. He canceled the largest infrastructure project in the U.S. He, he blocked a bridge to punish his political opponents. So let's ask him a question about bridges and infrastructure. Here's our two article mavens. I'll give you guys a quick look. Carmen and Matt. They're, Excellent. They're doing a good job. Good job, Matt. Yeah, that's great. And Dari's over there running the Skype. Than any governor Good job, crew. History. We don't need to raise taxes to get this done. We need to make the government run smarter and better and reform this corporate tax system. Bring that money back to the United States to build jobs. You don't want to be, you're one that shall not be named. We need to, use <laughs> to protect our grid from terrorists. All of those things are important and all those things would happen in a Christie administration. Thank you, sir. Christie administration. Ain't oh, yeah, that's that's some Christie administration. Uncomfortable to hear. He just says that to himself in the mirror in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. He, he, what he's running for is he wants a position in the administration. Several companies right he's now are pursuing for. mergers to move their corporate headquarters abroad and take huh, I wonder why that lower is. taxes. What will you do to stop the it ain't just taxes. building 
cash. I'll <laughs> consult some experts, yeah. and then I will do what they say. Well, I would uh, suggest a fair tax system, and that's what we have proposed. A flat tax uh, for everybody, no exemptions, no deductions.